Are Post 40% Bran Flakes really the best tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's largest-selling brand flakes, Post 40% brand flakes, and by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. Well, Friday afternoon is always an interesting time around the white frame house on Maple Street. During the week, it seems that some new facet of life is bound to appear and develop and finally reach its zenith as the junior members of the Anderson family begin to arrive home after the close of school on Friday. On this particular Friday afternoon, it's Betty who has come home on a towering wave of enthusiasm. She has Jim and Margaret in the kitchen telling them all about it. Like this. And, oh, Mother, you should see how she dresses. Well, personally, I think it shows bad taste for a girl to overdress for school. Oh, but that's the whole point, Mother. She doesn't overdress at all. No jewelry, very little makeup, no nail polish. And you know why? Probably can't afford them. <laughs> oh, Father, please. Actually, her family's loaded, simply and gloriously loaded. How do you know that? Does she tell you these things? Oh, heaven, No. She'd be the last person on earth to say anything like that. You can just tell from her conversation. She's so sophisticated, so ultra. She's real utterly ultra. Well, you can't be ultraer than that. <laughs> What's her name? You haven't told us that yet. It's Cynthia. Isn't that a divine, sophisticated name? Mm -hmm. What's her last name? Binkley. Uh -huh. Cynthia Binkley. Very nice. They've traveled all over, but all over. New York, Saratoga, Paris, France, Niagara Falls, just everywhere. Sounds very continental, especially Niagara Falls. <laughs> what does her father do? Retired Duke or something like that? Oh, I don't know what he does. He's on oodles of boards, I think. Oodles of boards? <laughs> oh, you know what I mean, Father. Boards, like on steel companies, oil companies, railroad companies, all that. Hmm. Wonder how he's fixed for insurance. Probably has oodles of it. <laughs> Her younger brother goes to some very, very exclusive military academy in the East. She showed me a picture of him. Very sophisticated looking, especially for a boy his age. Very suave, very. Hmm, sounds like quite a boy. How old is he? About Bud's age, a little older. All the time she was telling me about her brother, I kept thinking of mine. Didn't even dare mention him. Oh, now, that's not a very nice way to talk about Bud. It's all right, but he's so... Well, just look at him in the den there. Can you see him? Oh, well, yes, but look I didn't... Look at him, lying on the floor with his feet up in a chair, one tennis shoe off, reading a comic book, blue jeans. His hair looks like he slept in it. Creepers. Well, I'll admit he does need a little, uh, shall we say, polish. <laughs> Betty, I think you're overlooking a few rather important attributes in Bud, like uh, honesty, integrity, generosity, ambition. Well, I guess ambition isn't one of his strongest points. <laughs> but he's a good, solid boy. I'll get it. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. It might be Cynthia, and I don't want to take a chance on you answering it. Ah. Hello there. Listen to Lady Van Cleve. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's here. Here, bud, it's for you. Me? Who is it? I don't know. One of those groups you run around with. Must be Joe. Hello? Oh, hi, Joe. Listen to this phone conversation, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, not much, Joe. Well, it's hard to tell when I'll be done because I'm not doing anything in particular. <laughs> I'd say it takes a pretty sophisticated mind to figure out a sentence like that. Tonight? Well, why don't you take her? Well, what time would I have to call for? Well, now, that sounds encouraging. 
No, uh, I think I'll stay home tonight and fiddle out some frog gigs. Does that sound encouraging? <laughs> well, I don't want to be out late if I go frog hunting in the morning. Can you imagine Cynthia's brother going frog hunting? Yes. Which slingshot do you mean? The one you made or the one you bought? No, you'll have to make a better offer than that. He may not be a Prince Charming, but he's a good businessman. Your dinosaur bones? No. <laughs> now I ask you, is that any way to get a date? Your uncle's moose head? <laughs> Does that belong to you now? Gosh, you're, you're making it so hard to turn down. Isn't that just too disgusting? Well, okay, it's a deal. Where does she live? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, Joe, goodbye. You say, Mom... Yes, bud? Uh, I got a date to take a girl to the junior high dance tonight. Well, that's fine. Where's that pair of blue jeans I had on yesterday? <laughs> Creepers, you're not going to wear those to a dance, are you? No, I left a wrench in the pocket of them, and I got to fix the wheel on my bike. Bicycle? Are you going to take her on that? No, I just want to go out and pick up something before I go to the dance. A corsage? No, a moose head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll look good in it. It's just your type. Thanks. I'll be right back, Mom. Well, you'd better hurry. You haven't much time. Okay. Mother, isn't there something we can do about him? Do about him? What do you mean? Well, how am I ever going to explain him to Cynthia? Father, have you no understanding of gracious living? I guess not. Here, Cynthia has this terribly refined brother, and what can I say about mine? Can't you just hear me saying, Oh, yes, my brother's quite social. He has lots of dates. He got his last one in a trade for a moose head. <laughs> well, why don't you try it? To me, that would sound like a real fascinating way to open a conversation. <laughs> oh, Father. Mother, do you think I'd look good with my hair perfectly straight? Personally, I think you look just fine the way you are right now. Betty, you're old enough to have learned by now that the best thing you can be is yourself. That's what I'm trying to do. But I want to be the real me. Not this flouncy, decorated-up thing I've been. I think I'll go upstairs and do my hair some other way. Well, don't ruin it. If Cynthia should happen to call me, tell her I'm in the solarium reading proof. In French. Who is this Binkley family, anyway? When did they move to Springfield? It was this week, apparently. After the build-up Betty's given them, I'm rather anxious to meet them, see what they're like. Mommy! Is she in some of Betty's classes? Is that where she met her? Mommy! Yeah, that's right. Yes, Kathy? Mommy? Well, I don't know. Is something wrong? Yes. She talks kind of funny. She talks like this. Hello, darling. Oh. <laughs> well, um, I wouldn't worry about that, Angel. She's just suffering from acute aristocracy. From what? Nothing. Oh, answer that, will you, Angel? If it's for Bud, he'll be right back. Okay, I'll tell them. Hello? What? I can't understand you. Oh, just a minute. I'll call her. Is it for me? No, Betty. Hey, Betty! Telephone! Betty! Tell I hear you. I'll be right there. Gee, <clears throat> Mommy, you should hear who's on the phone. Who is it? I don't know, but she talks just like Betty does. Hello, dear. I guess she didn't learn how to talk when she was little. <laughs> I can tell who it is without even hearing her. Is it shrimp, Cynthia? I don't know. Ask him and find out. Hello? No, I just be lounging and dipping into a bit of Proust. Isn't that awful? <laughs> Proust. He's dead now, I think. Culture is rampant tonight. <laughs> oh, didn't I tell you? Yes, I have a brother. Hey, Dad. Well, it's hard to describe him. He's very handsome. Hey, look, Dad. Just take a look at my moose head. It's a little moth-eaten, but I can get some glue. Not and... so loud, Bud. Betty's on the phone. Oh, yes, very handsome and very sophisticated. He's remarkably suave for his age. 
Why suave me? <laughs> He's a beautiful dancer, paints quite well, reads all the time, travels a lot. Who's she talking about? You'll never guess. <laughs> And he's quite a sportsman, too. Had some fine trophies. An utterly fascinating moose head. I'll bet it's not as good as mine. <laughs> Where did you hear that I had a brother? He's what? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, Cynthia. Nothing wrong, dear. Oh, I just... Cynthia, let me call you back later. I hear Major calling me. I will, darling. <laughs> Goodbye. What's the matter with Tallulah? She's got aristocracy, Daddy says. <laughs> <laughs> Bud Anderson, why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? That your date for tonight was with Cynthia's sister. Uh-oh. Well, here we go. I don't know any of Cynthia's sisters. I don't even know Cynthia. The girl you're taking to the junior high dance is named Roberta, isn't she? Roberta Binkley? Yeah, what about it? What about it? She's Cynthia's little sister. Here, I gave you that beautiful, beautiful build-up. Now she'll get to see you and find out it's all untrue. <laughs> Bud, you've got to cancel your date with Roberta. No, Betty, wait. You've got to? You simply got to. I can. I'll lose the moose head. <laughs> oh? Father, tell him he's got to. Make him, Father. Now, leave me out of this. This is between you and Bud and the Moosehead. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, why was I born? Why? Why? I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Mother, he can't go over there to Cynthia's. He just can't. Why can't I? Oh. Betty, stop wailing and tearing your hair. I'll never be able to face Cynthia. I'll have to quit school. I'll leave the country, that's all. I'll leave the country. What's she going to leave the country for? <laughs> uh, Bud. Did she pop a gasket? <laughs> well, Bud. I'm just standing here with my moose head and she pops a gasket. <laughs> <laughs> How can you do this to me? How? How? Who? Who? <laughs> Dad, what's everybody talking about? Bud. Yeah? You've heard the expression, into every life a little rain must fall. Yeah? Put up your umbrella. <laughs> Well, if Betty has her way, the Andersons will be having crumpets and tea every afternoon and serving petite continental breakfast in the morning. But, Mother, if you want to give your family a good old American breakfast that's good for them, listen. I'm sure that most of you mothers know that bran is good for your family because it provides those important keep-regular benefits. Maybe you've even served it in your home, only to find that the family wasn't overly enthusiastic about its taste. Well, try it again now. You'll discover that something wonderful has happened. Yes, now, post-40% bran flakes have a marvelous new flavor, a magic oven flavor, and new crisp texture that's truly delicious. Matter of fact, it's so good, many people who have tried new post-bran flakes tell us it's their favorite cereal. Briefly, Mother, this means that when you serve post-40% bran flakes, you'll be giving your family the important keep regular benefits of bran, their daily ounce of prevention, in a cereal they'll truly enjoy eating. Here's a catchy little tune that'll help remind you to start serving post-40% bran flakes soon. For goodness sake, eat post-bran flakes. So good and so good for you. When you do your weekend marketing, Mother, be sure to get Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling Bran Flakes. They're good, and so good for you. Poor Betty. She was getting along so nicely, apparently making quite an impression on her new school chum, Cynthia Binkley, 
by telling about her smooth and oh-so-sophisticated brother, Bud. Wouldn't you know that tonight of all times, Bud would have a date with Cynthia's younger sister, Roberta. Well, it's evening now, and I'm sorry to report that things don't look much brighter for daughter Betty. She's in the den with Jim right now, and he's trying to explain the situation. Like this. Well, I talked to him, Betty, but he can't see your point. Oh, creeper. If he cancels the date with Roberta, he'll have to give the moose head back to Joe. And this he doesn't want to do. Oh, it's just too painful to think about. That big oaf going over to the Binkley's after all the things I told Cynthia. It just can't happen, that's all. Well, have you solved your weighty problem? I wish you wouldn't make light of it, Mother. Put yourself in my place. How would you feel? Well, Betty... I know, I know, I ask for it. Once we practice to deceive, oh, what a tangled web we weave. Cheaters never prosper. I know, but I'm in it now, and how am I going to get out? Where is Bud? Well, I think he's upstairs combing the hair on his moose head. <laughs> he won't give up the idea of going. Father tried that. Had you thought of possibly, um, well, coaching him a little? Coaching him? Why not? As far as I can see, it's your only chance, Princess. I doubt if you can make a continental out of him, but uh, you might smooth off some of the rough edges. Well, he has to leave in half an hour. But it has to be done. You're right, Father. It simply has to be done. Bud! Yeah? Come down to the den, will you, dear? I think I'll go finish up in the kitchen. What's the matter, honey? Don't you want to see this? <laughs> I don't think I'm up to it. You can tell me what happened. Now, don't expect too much, princess. What you want? Bud, would you do me a favor? Now, listen to me. If it's about canceling the date with Roberta, the answer is no. I didn't say anything about canceling the date. All I ask is that you do just a couple of little things for me. What kind of things? I'm uh, going in the living room and read the paper. <laughs> Well, look, Father probably told you. I told Cynthia you were, well, kind of different than you really are. Yeah. I had to, you see, because, well, they're very sophisticated people. They've been everywhere. Well, I want you to be like them. I'll tell you just what to say. You want me to put on an act? Well, it's... No, nope, won't do it. It's not like putting on an act. It's just being smooth and genteel. That's fraud. Won't do it. All you have to do is look and act and talk like you know a little something. That's fraud. Won't do it. <laughs> look, I'll wash your share of the dishes every night for a week. I'll do it. <laughs> you will? Remember, starting tomorrow, dishes every night for a week. All right, all right. Now, come on in the living room. Oh, jeepers, we've got to hurry. You only have a couple of minutes. Come on. Okay, okay. Don't pull my sleeve. I'm coming. Well, how did it come out? Did you uh, reach an agreement? He's going to do it. Kathy! What are you calling the shrimp for? She's going to be Roberta. What you want? You're going to be Roberta Binkley. I am? Now, you stand over there by the couch. That'll be the Binkley's front door. And you're greeting Bud as he comes to take you to the dam. Okay. All right. The door of this gorgeous mansion has opened, and you, the sophisticated, continental young man, greet the young lady. What do you say? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you do not. And, Father, if you can't be serious... I'm sorry, Princess. Uh, but how do you know about this gorgeous mansion of the Binkley's? Have you ever been there? No, but from what Cynthia's told me, it must be fabulous. All right, now listen, bud. You don't say hi. You bow from the waist, make a sweeping gesture with your right hand, and say with a smile, Good evening, madame. Yeah? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Well, go on, say something. Don't just stand there. Good evening, madame. Hi. <laughs> Kathy, you don't have to talk. If I got a mansion, I got a right to talk. Look, I gotta get going. Not yet. You still have a couple of minutes. 
Now, when you're in the house, the butler will probably take your coat. What do I say to him? <laughs> Nothing. Just a polite thank you. Should I be the butler? No. <laughs> now you'll be introduced to the rest of the family. Do I make the sweeping gesture? You shake Mr. Binkley's hand and say, How do you do, sir? What do I do with Mrs. Binkley? <laughs> you bow from the waist and kiss her hand. Ew. <laughs> I'll be Mrs. Binkley. You may kiss my hand. That's all. Won't do it. All right, so you don't kiss her hand. You lift it lightly and bow and say, So nice to meet you, Mrs. Binkley. And then you say something like, Dreadfully sorry I'm late, but I was detained at the club. What club? <laughs> well, how's it going? I don't think it's going to work. It is, too. Now, pretend Mother's Mrs. Binkley. Go ahead, Bud. Good evening, Bud. Good evening, Mrs. Binkley. Uh... You're a little late. Where have you been? Home. <laughs> Oh, I don't know how the instruction is coming along, but it's about time for you to leave, Bud. I'll get the car out of the garage. What are you going to do with the car? Take Bud over to pick up Roberta and drive them to the dance. Any other suggestions? Bud can't be driven over there in the family car. He has to pick up Roberta in a taxi. Taxi? Taxi? I've never been in a taxi. If you go in a taxi, can I go with you? I'm not going in a taxi. <laughs> Betty, I think you're carrying this a little far. It's bad enough trying to impress the Binkleys by coaching Bud, but the taxi... Please, Father, I'll pay for it out of my own money. It's so smart, so sophisticated to arrive in a taxi. Here, here's some money. Have the cab driver stop at a flower shop and buy a corsage. What's that? <laughs> Flowers for Roberta. Is she sick? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, she's not sick Flowers for her to wear to the dance And don't forget to tip the cab driver What for? Give him a quarter Where are you going, princess? I'm going to call a cab Get your coat and scarf, bud, and try to find some gloves I haven't got any gloves, I got a pair of mittens <laughs> Oh, I'd love to be a mouse in the corner at the Binkley's Oh, this should make history Talk about keeping up with the Joneses. Hello. Will you send the cab out, please? Right away, to 607 Maple Street. Thank you. Maybe I ought to call John. Well, there's the world's fastest service. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Father? Your cab just arrived. It's out there in front. It can be. I just called. It's there, all right. But how could it? I, I mean, it's impossible. Well, someone's coming to the front door. Probably the driver. Well, shouldn't one of us go to the door? We can't leave the man standing out there. I'm not sure I want to meet a man who can get a cab out here from downtown <laughs> in two seconds. <laughs> he might have pointed ears. Oh, father. Well, go to the door, bud. Who, me? Go on, go on. All right, you don't have to push me. You better come with me, Dad. I'm right behind you. <laughs> Hello, bud. What are you doing over here? Well, I came over in the taxi. Is this young lady a friend of yours, bud? Well, this is Roberta. Roberta, this is my dad. Oh, uh, how do you do, sir? This is indeed a most delightful pleasure. Uh, indeed. Well, it's indeed for me, too. <laughs> Won't you come in? Thank you. Father, where's the... Oh, who's this? Betty, this is Roberta. Roberta? Roberta Binkley? How do you do, madame? This is indeed a most delightful pleasure. I'm sure. Yes, but what... Don't what? look at me. I don't know anything. <laughs> Jim, did you say... Oh, hello there. Roberta, this is Mrs. Anderson. How do you do, madame? This is indeed a most delightful pleasure. Delightful. Uh, how do you do, Roberta? She came over in the cab. But, but 
why? Well, you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble, dear. I know Bud was a little late, but... Oh, it wasn't my idea, Mrs. Anderson. Oh? It was my sister's. She said fashionable people always ride in taxi cabs. <laughs> Father? <laughs> How do you like that? That's what my sister said. <laughs> Bud. I had a hard time finding your house. I was looking for a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Father My sister sure gets some crazy ideas Gee, your house is just like ours It is? Where do you keep the butler? <laughs> what butler? I think there's been a little misunderstanding But we won't go into it now uh, Jim, if you want to get the car out and drive Bud and Roberta to the dance... Good. Now we're making sense. By the way, where did Betty go? I think our wealthy and sophisticated young debutante has retired to her solarium. <laughs> well, before the final curtain, let's drop into the Anderson's kitchen for a minute. Seems Kathy snuck off there all by herself. Honestly, this family. Thank goodness a girl can get away from it all once in a while. Now, let's see. One spoonful. And the water's hot. Sugar. Mmm, there's nothing like good old postum. Kathy's got something, folks. And it's something that you can have and enjoy whenever you want, as often as you want. For swell-tasting instant postum is completely caffeine-free, contains no caffeine at all, so there's no chance for coffee nerves, no risk of sleepless nights due to caffeine. How about getting a jar of instant postum tomorrow? Let the whole family enjoy postum. Cup for cup, it's less than one-third coffee's cost. <laughs> See that young girl sitting up in a room at 607 Maple Street? That's Betty Anderson, and she's just a trifle weary. She's been hurrying this evening, trying to keep up with the Joneses, or in this case, the Binkleys. Downstairs, Jim has just returned from his trip to the junior high dance. Oh, well, after all the excitement, it seems we ought to do something. Go somewhere. Yes, you've been cooped up here in the mansion all week. <laughs> you've had a hard day at the club. Oh, yes, dreadful. Margaret, tell the upstairs maid to tell the downstairs maid to tell the butler that we're dining out. Uh, where are we going? Down to the corner to get a hamburger. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Dorothy Lovett as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Norma Jean Nilsson. Mom, I think you're beautiful. Well, thank you, Johnny. You're the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Thank you, Johnny. Mom? Yes, Johnny? Can I have wheat meal for breakfast tomorrow? Sure, make him happy, Mom, with the best hot cereal anywhere. Post wheat meal is packed full of solid nourishment, great for kids, and so wonderfully delicious. Post wheat meal cooks in just three minutes. Try rich, hot post wheat meal with a picture of Roy Rogers on the package. Post wheat meal, the best hot cereal you ever ate. <laughs> Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on NBC.